Welcome back to Duke Scopy TV. I'm Darren McDermott. Well, the equity markets have been making headlines and I have Bruno Este in the studio to tell us more. Welcome back, Bruno. Good morning, Doreen. So tell us about the breakout, Bruno. Yes, we, before we, we focus on the breakout, let's see that, in fact, for the last uh, three, four weeks, there has been a correction within the US market. And one best example to look at it is to look at the ratio of uh, the discretionary sector in blue be divided by the uh, staple uh, sectors. Staples being uh, the goods that you have to buy anyway, uh, whatever uh, the uh, cyclical aspect of the economy up or down is. And we see that uh, we had a substantial correction uh, move to the defensive, to the staple uh, side, during uh, March till, till late April. And, and this amplitude of this correction is similar to different uh, phase in the past, as we have seen along these uh, red lines. Also, uh, we noticed uh, measured uh, and the movement that it is quite oversold. And that means that uh, there is a chance for now the market to pull back and uh, revert to the mean. So will we see the breakout on the S&P 500 continue? I think, I think we will. Uh, one of the reason, additional reason is the fact that the volatility uh, on the Bollinger Bands have been decreasing. Now the price is testing above the upper band and that means also that volatility will increase and, and go on. So tell us about what sort of upside targets do we have, Bruno? I think uh, we can uh, compute with, with different uh, Fibonacci projection an area between uh, 1958 and 1988. But we'll see that it will take time, probably uh, one, three, two to three weeks. And also that these prices uh, will be reached within the normal upward sloping channels. So uh, this is fine. So this clearly is pretty good news for Europe, right? That should, uh, because uh, for two reasons. The first reason is that uh, the relative strength of the Euro stocks versus the S&P 500 is still flat, even rising a little. And the second is that uh, we have the similar situation as on the S&P. Uh, we are above a cloud and we are also testing soon uh, the upper band and later on the volatility should increase as well. So this is obviously short term weekly, but let's have a look at longer terms. Well, the projection longer terms are the following. We can project for the uh, Euro stocks uh, a direction of 34.50 to uh, 33.50. That's the area that we are projecting. We see we have a kind of a upward channel also with some resistance, which always makes higher highs. And when we looked at the monthly, the good news is, of course, that for the second month, we are now above the, the monthly cloud and therefore the upside is open. And then how does this influence the Japanese market? The Japanese market have, has been lagging a little bit, lagging because the relative strength of uh, the Nikkei versus the S&P has been moving down. It's now trying to bottom. At least we know, notice that uh, there is a rebound which occur at support level, which is above uh, 14,200. And that's probably good news. It's not going to outperform, but uh, therefore it's only going to try to reach the upper uh, part of the previous high, which is 16. Thousand uh, or so. So it's good news. Bruno, thank you very much. You're welcome. And thank you for tuning in to Dukascopy TV. And do stay tuned as we have plenty more updates like this heading your way. See you soon.